Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I uh, wanted to do a quick walk and talk. It was raining and hailing earlier and then the sun came out and it was beautiful and then we're given, I've been given a break to walk and do some more work in the backyard. So uh, I wanted to talk about a few things. When I did that study, um, uh, the Godhead, uh, why the Godhead is so important for salvation, um, I kicked the Trinity but I left some people out. So, let's do a little walk and talk. Uh, the Mormons believe that Jesus is a created being. Uh, him and Satan are basically brothers. So, they're not saved. They don't believe in the Godhead. And remember what we talked about in that study, Godhead. In order to get Jesus' righteousness imputed to you, you have to believe that, believe that Jesus is, a, is fully and completely God. That's what you're going to believe when you first get saved. And then God will show you that Jesus is the person of the Godhead. But God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. The Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Um, and Jesus raised himself from the dead. Destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. Uh, and he's talking about his body. Um, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Capital S Spirit. Made alive by the Holy Spirit. And then there's verses in there where it says, God is, hath raised him from the dead. So, you got the Mormons who believe that. And they don't believe in the real Jesus Christ. They believe in a Jesus Christ. Uh, Jehovah's Witness believe that Jesus is, their Jesus is Archangel Gabriel, I think it's Gabriel, Michael or Gabriel, that uh, came down and was manifest in the flesh. And when he died, Jesus died, they, he went back up to heaven. So, um, yeah, they failed the test, and that's another reason why the Godhead is so important. Uh, there's people who believe Jesus is just a prophet. Okay. They fail the test. They don't believe Jesus is fully and completely God. They're lost. They don't have Jesus' righteousness imputed to them. Okay. The real Jesus Christ is fully and completely God. Okay. And while we're on that subject, I had a brother in Christ. I'll link his video. I did a video. I'm a little out of breath because I've been hauling rocks and decided to go for a walk and talk. Um, there we go. I did a video. Um called Who Needs the Godhead? We Have the Trinity. And I've been saying that it's only a matter of time before they try to do away with the Godhead completely, completely do away with the Godhead and just stick with the Trinity and push the Trinity. And a lot of these Trinity people are like, that ain't true, we believe the Godhead and the Trinity are the same thing. And I found a brother in Christ sent, sent me a link and there was a guy that was teaching that the Godhead just meant Jesus had the qualities of the Father and that the Godhead and the Trinity aren't the same thing, and they promote the Trinity. They believe in the Trinity hardcore. So, um, now Brother found what well, I used to always quote, uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, for there's but one capital G, God the Father, and no one's been able to refute that, because there's only one capital G, God the Father. Capital G, God, is always with reference to the Father, and the uh, lowercase g, God, is reference to Satan. Now, they're interchangeable. Jesus is God, the Father. He is God fully and completely. Okay, he's the person of the Godhead. But there's only one, one capital G, God the Father. There's no God the Son, lowercase g, God the Son, lowercase g, God the Holy Spirit. It's not in the Bible. So some guy, <laughs> and Brother JT, Sinner's Repentance, some guy, I've, I didn't think anybody would be foolish enough to try to touch that verse and mess it up. But I'll put a link in the uh, description. He really does a great rebuke and correction through the Word of God. And I'll link it. So, but why am I saying it here? Because, brothers and sisters, I keep learning things that are going on in the world. Especially here in America and how wicked it's getting here in America. And I could mention it, but it's very vexing some of the things that are going on out there. Uh, it's like prostitution's becoming legal. Uh, pedophilia, I'll, I'll name some things in general, um, cannibalism, uh, feminism, uh, you know, we're starting to see stuff like the cashless society and learning things that, that I've looked into where Americans can fall overnight. People say, well, we're still a long ways down the road. I've learned some things that uh, could happen overnight and our economy can just collapse and crash in a heartbeat. Um, so we're definitely in the last days. Uh, Jesus is coming back any day now. Keep looking for that blessed hope. The birds are still out. <laughs> I'm shocked. Normally things start going quiet around this time because it's getting towards winter time. But um, I also wanted to say I've, I got a great testimony from a sister in Christ. And I love getting testimonies and reading them. Um, 
it was a blessing every time I get to read someone's testimony that's truly saved. And I love prayer requests and praying. Um, and uh, prayer request was that she she asked for prayer. And I never came out with the prayer request, but I prayed, and she wanted to be able to be able to reach some of the family members, not family members, sorry, people at work. And I got emailed back saying she was able to give a gospel track and talk to somebody at work about the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Prayers are going answered. Okay, they're not always going unanswered. Sometimes prayer, the best uh, prayers are unanswered prayers in the sense that we're asking for something that God knows isn't the best for us. God knows what's best for us. But there's also prayers out there that are getting answered. And God is hearing us. Okay. Let your, quest, let your request be known to God. Um, we're supposed to ask God for things. And whether it's spiritual protection, physical protection, me, physical strength to get the backyard done all summer. Um, I will, it'll probably take a couple more weeks, but I will, brothers and sisters of Christ, get a video out to show all the hard work, physical labor that you can glorify God in that I've been doing over the summer. And... Uh, yeah, um, so that's been going on. But you pray and you ask God for things. Uh, for my eyesight, uh, I don't have my glasses on. I took a nap, took the glasses off, and then got to working in the backyard. And next thing I realized, I don't have my glasses on. So, uh, but like for my sight to read and stuff like that, um, there's just all kinds of things you can ask for and give God thanks in and glory in. You gotta make sure you can give God glory in it. If you can't, you shouldn't be doing it. So, uh, just want to talk about that. Oh, uh, P.O. Box. I think I'm going to go ahead and open up a P.O. Box and try it out for a few months and see, you know, people want to email letters. Uh, I don't really collect books like Brother Brian does at King James Video Ministries. I do collect old Bibles. And every once in a while I'll find something interesting, and I've done some videos, something interesting at the used bookstore down here. But for the most part, I just, you know, I love old Bibles. And if it's really old, I keep it. <laughs> Especially because I have that one really, really old one I think goes back to uh, England. You know, it's a really, really old Bible. And it's kind of falling apart as far as the leather cover that goes around it. And so, uh, that kind of stuff I'll keep. But when I find Bibles that are in good condition, I try to give them to people. Um, I collect them. I keep one in my car at all times so I can give it to somebody. Uh, if I come across, and so far I've given, I think, two or three Bibles away in the last year. I've um, given a lot of gospel tracts and leave, left gospel tracts around. I've had people ask me what gospel tracts I would suggest. Um, we've already heard the videos about Chick Publications, how they're getting out of control, uh, just preaching any gospel to sell just uh, gospel tracts. And they've got tons of different types of gospel tracks. And what I mean by that is, I linked it, Brother JT did a great video. Um, uh, but they're just getting desperate to sell and become a business. So people keep asking, what a good one. Um, I, gosh, I can't remember. I'll try to throw a link. But Brother Brian has one. I'll throw a link because that's where I found some. Um, you still got to go through them, Brother Says Christ. Whatever place you go saying, hey, this gospel crack sounds good. Make sure you go through everything. Uh, read the whole thing. Make sure it hits on all the key points. The lost state, someone's lost state, the state of man, sin, uh, repentance, uh, belief, confessing both in prayer, and then asking God to save you. And then, you know, after God saves you, the changed life. A lot of them don't even mention the changed life part, but that you can t explain to the person, you know, after they get saved, you know. They kind of know it. Most people that I've talked to understand that getting saved means a changed life. So just make sure to read the whole gospel tract out. There's old church. Um, and I just can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, there's a lot of different sites. There's one big one that uh, does a lot of uh, tracks. But like I said, you just got to read them, brother, sister Christ. Make sure they line up with the King James Bible. They have every part of the plan of salvation in it. If they just say only believe, get rid of it. If they say you don't have to say, say a prayer, get rid of it. Most of the time that you're going to have a hard time with is repentance. Okay, A lot of times they will just say it's just admitting you're a sinner. 
That's not true biblical repentance. True biblical repentance is having sorrow for sinning against God. You're sorry for doing it and you wish you never did it. We're all sinners, absolutely. But you wish you never sinned against God. That's sorry. If I lied to someone, I'm sorry for it. I understand the consequences. I've lost that person's trust and I wish I didn't. I never lied to that person. Okay, you have to have sorrow for sinning against God. Just saying, hey, just admit that we are all sinners. You're a sinner, I'm a sinner, we're all sinners. That's not true biblical repentance. And that's the hardest thing you're going to find in these gospel tracts where there are a lot of them are just like, admit you're a sinner and that's it. Uh, no, you got to have sorrow for sinning against God. You have to come to God broken. So, uh, you just got to keep your eyes out and, and be vigilant when it comes to finding a good gospel tract. A lot of people are making their own, brother and sister in Christ. It's getting so bad out there, you just got to make your own gospel tracts. And it's not too hard. A lot of cutting and stapling or cutting or printing out and folding, you know. So, uh, it's going to cost a little money and time to print it out and set up a... An outline. Maybe there's brothers and uh, sisters in Christ out there that can do outlines and put them online. That we can download the uh, outline, the diagram that we can print out ourselves and just fold up and you know start handing out gospel tracts that do touch on all the main parts, and nothing's left out. So uh, that's that. So I think I pretty much hit everything I want to talk about. Um, trying to get more videos out in the next week. Uh, I've been working really hard and being really distracted. Um, still spending time with the Lord a lot. But uh been really working hard on that backyard. Hopefully uh, the rain we had today. We're supposed to have rain a lot for the next two weeks. And I'm hoping uh, next Wednesday I get to get my chickens. Woo rooster and, and, and five chickens. So the chicken hut is, is good enough to have chickens in it. But there's still work to be done around it. Um... But yeah, keep working with your hands, brothers and sisters in Christ. Keep working with your hands. Do things that glorify God and give God all the glory. So I just want to say grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you in Christ Jesus. Keep me in, my, keep me in your prayers, brothers and sisters in Christ. And all of you are always in my prayer. I'm always praying for the brethren.